Hey, it's Mike here, and today I'm gonna to respond to What I Learned's recent video on bacon, which was more or less just 12 minutes of defending a particular carcinogen that is in processed meat, which is pretty worrisome. Well, he does include statements like, I'm not saying bacon is healthy. A lot of people are gonna walk away from this video feeling a lot better about eating processed meat. In fact, he even insinuates at one point that the nitrates in these processed meats might actually be beneficial for your arteries. A lot of things to unpack here. You know, he says that you would have to eat an all sausage diet to actually get cancer from the carcinogenic nitrosamines in meat, which we'll talk about, or that, you know, if, if the risk ratio is under two in a scientific study, you, know, you should just ignore it. It all sounds very nerdy, but we are gonna make it simple, don't worry. And I'm also gonna open a vegan cuts box halfway through, and if you want it now, I have a coupon code link below for $5 off your first box. Anyway, let's go. So for background, what I learned has over a million subscribers, and in the past has made some somewhat pro all meat diet videos, which I was really tempted to respond to, but regrettably I didn't, so now this time I am responding, and as you already know, the WHO has deemed red and processed meats class 2A and 1A carcinogens, and part of the reason they did that was because of the nitrosamines. Now, that is a carcinogen that is formed from the nitrates and nitrites that are added to meat as a preservative, but his thesis becomes pretty clear. He wants you to believe that the WHO is wrong and that nitrosamines in meat do not cause cancer. Let's start by him asking the groundbreaking question. Is a breakfast of an egg, avocado, and some bacon really that bad for you? Now he has a very neutral way of narrating, but does that statement not set off maybe a few low carb pro meat red flags there for you? Anyway, we'll answer that question throughout the video. But first let's start with his first claim or insinuation that really sort of rubbed me the wrong way. That insinuation that the nitrates and nitrates that are added as preservatives to processed meat may be beneficial like the nitrates naturally occurring in plants. Now, there are some major issues with the nitrate-nitrite idea. First, both compounds are found in vegetables. It is well documented that a portion of the plant nitrates turn into nitric oxide in the body and nitric oxide has been shown to be beneficial for arteries and oxygen delivery and other things. Okay, so in the body, nitrite is reduced to nitric oxide and nitric oxide is regarded as essential for health because your body uses this molecule to relax blood vessels. This hasn't been shown with meat at all. There's a reason he's not flashing a study here. And now we're gonna have people walking away from this video going, oh, I gotta eat bacon for my artery health. Hey Jimmy, fun fact. Did you know that bacon actually helps your arteries according to what I learned? Cool, man. Where'd you hear that? What I learned. I. I get it, you learned it, just just calm down, man. Just a quick reminder that processed meat is also associated with increased heart disease risk. From this study, we're talking about a 42% higher heart disease risk for those that ate processed meat compared to those that didn't. However, plants that are high in these nitrates are associated with lower risk. So no, it doesn't appear that bacon is good for your arteries, but why does this disparity exist? Well, there is a major difference between the nitrates in plants and the nitrates and nitrites in processed meats in terms of what happens within the body. There is a fork in the road, if you will, a fork where these nitrogen compounds can either go the way of the dark side or the light side. Shout out to baby Yoda. He's just so cute. Let's compare these nitrogen compounds from meat or plants as they enter the body. With plants, it's quite simple. That nitrate gets turned into nitrite by your saliva, and then a portion of that in your body can be turned into nitric oxide, which again is very beneficial for your arteries. So again, that's nitrate to nitrite to nitric oxide. And then in terms of the nitrates and nitrates that are added to processed meat, I know this gets confusing, the nitrates will also be turned into nitrate so to keep it simple, everything past the mouth is gonna be a nitrate, which will then be turned into one thing or another thing. It doesn't appear that those plant nitrates are gonna be turned into nitric oxide at all. I haven't found any evidence for that but they could instead be turned into those carcinogenic nitrosamines in the stomach and the large intestine. And nitrosamines are one of the main carcinogens in cigarettes. You do not want these in your body, but why don't those plant-derived nitrites end up turning into nitrosamines as well? Well, it turns out there's a ton of phytochemicals that are protective here, according to this study. You know, they inhibit the transformation using things like vitamin C and various antioxidants. 
However, these processed meats do not have these antioxidants and phytochemicals. Instead, it gets worse. The heme iron in red meat actually catalyzes, actually helps this process take place. They enhance the formation of nitroso compounds in the gastrointestinal tract. So the insinuation that these meat preservatives would actually help your arteries is a total joke, especially when you consider the saturated fat content of these processed meats and how saturated fat is associated with artery impairment in many studies including clinical trials. Now I want to hit on a nuance, which is really the key here, really important to understand, and it's what, what I learned actually uses to undermine the carcinogenic effect of processed meat, and that is exogenous versus endogenous nitrosamine creation. Exogenous from the outside would be nitrosamines that are in meat, that were formed within meat, and then endogenous are ones that are created within your own body. Simply put, the process in the digestive system that creates those nitrosamines, and there's a little part that's kind of easy to miss if you aren't paying close attention. A chemist and biochemist who has published relevant research in several journals like the American Journal of Physiology, Dr. Mark Miller, says that nitrate and nitrite are not nitrosating species. That is, these molecules cannot directly form the cancer-causing nitrosamines. He actually presents the pseudoscientific view of one researcher as fact stating that these nitrates in meat can't actually be formed into nitrosamines because it's chemically not possible. So whether your bacon contains inorganic sodium nitrite or all natural nitrate from celery juice, it's not getting turned into the cancerous nitrosamines in your body. Sounds credible, right? Well, firstly, this appears to be the consensus that yes, you can make nitrosamines in your system from nitrates and nitrates. And what does he use to sort of break this consensus? Well, this LinkedIn article from a researcher who on his own website describes himself as making, you know, great strides in the multi-level marketing industry, which more often than not is kind of a pyramid scheme. But it's less about who he is and more about how this claim is just patently false from this study. Humans can also be exposed to nitroso compounds or nitrosamines by endogenous routes and a high red meat diet leads to the endogenous synthesis of nitroso compounds in volunteers. Furthermore, that it happens in the colon and also that heme increases this to a striking degree. And to that first study talking about the formation in volunteers, they actually fed people an increased amount of red meat and then measured the nitrosamines coming out of their body in their feces. They found that increased red meat induced a significant threefold increase in the amount of nitrosamines in their feces, which was similar to the levels of people who smoke cigarettes. Nitrosamines are again, one of the two main carcinogens in cigarettes. The other one is actually polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which ironically come from grilling meat in the form of smoke, but that's for another time. Point is increasing that red meat intake actually put your fecal nitrosamine content on par with people who smoke, which is really not a good thing. And furthermore, he is just patently false saying that you aren't making nitrosamine endogenously within your own body. So he then continues the whole video with the assumption that endogenously created nitrosamines aren't actually a threat or part of the equation. He just focuses on the exogenous ones, which once again can form from the preservatives in meat through various conditions. What about the cancerous nitrosamines already present in bacon, frankfurters, or salami thanks to heat processing? Of course, he then calculates that you'd have to have a 100% sausage diet to get enough exogenous nitrosamines to get cancer according to a mouse study. You would have to eat more than 1.1 kilograms, which is two and a half pounds or 2,700 calories of frankfurters a day for years to develop a cancerous tumor at some point, probably in the second half of your life. But let's play along. Firstly, the duration of those mice studies is just so short compared to human lifespan. Now he mentions how the lifespan was longer than normal in the mouse study, but really that's still just a few years long and less than 10% of a human lifespan in which we have time to develop cancer. And he also only counts one type of nitrosamine, NDMA, not to be confused with the drug MDMA, which if you are on right now, this video is either very confusing or you completely understand it. But there are several types of nitrosamines that cause cancer. We also have NDEA, which is in notable amounts in meat. You add all these together. And from this study that looked at nitrosamine content in foods and cigarettes as well, well, here's Dr. Greger's summary of the findings. Four hot dogs has more than a pack of 20 cigarettes. Here's how much nitrosamine you can measure over the course of a day in someone eating ham or sausage. 
And here are two representative graphs of how much is flowing through the bodies of those eating vegetarian. So the exogenous ones aren't worth writing off entirely, but it is really about the endogenous ones that you should be worried about. This study mentions some equations for exogenous NDM creation, which again, particularly referring to NDMA that what I learned views as most important. And what I learned actually uses his mouse study to estimate a cancer causing amount of NDMA in humans. Using Anrup Nair's human equivalent dose conversion, we can estimate that a 70 kilogram human would need a dose of 0 0.0013 milligrams or 1.3 micrograms per kilogram of NDMA. Or for the 70 kilogram person he talks about, we're talking about 91 micrograms of NDMA per day. But back to this study on estimates for endogenous NDMA creation, which is real. It mentions a slightly older estimation, our first figure, which is 0.37 micrograms of NDMA created in digestion per gram of nitrate rich food. So a 100 gram serving of processed meat could easily get you up to 37 micrograms of NDMA. But you know, that's only a third of that cancer causing dose. So, you know, I guess what I learned is right. I'm just gonna actually delete this video. Nope, the study mentions a newer estimation of endogenous NDMA creation from other researchers, which is 70 times higher than the one I just mentioned. That puts us up at 2,600 micrograms or 28 times the amount of NDMA he calculated was required to cause cancer. Now we have a range that is very concerning and just to nail the point home, that same study, while acknowledging that there's a variability in their estimates, has the risk of endogenous NDMA at thousands of times higher than all of the exogenous NDMA sources combined. So clearly endogenous NDMA matters, it's a real threat, and the amount that you could create from a actual amount of meat that you would eat is clinically relevant. Now to a quick clip of me opening a Vegan Cuts box. Vegan Cuts is a service that sends you a delicious box of different vegan foods. Here we go. One of truth. Badoom. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's a cute little goat right here. Look, look at all these things. Pop chips, barbecue, coconut treat thing. We've got all sorts of things in here. I didn't realize how much was in here. Oh my gosh. We've got some chocolate. We've got some... Mushroom chai latte mix, IQ bar. What is this big thing? Unreal dark. Oh my god, I do miss peanut butter M and M's from being a child. And this is like the vegan version. I didn't even know this existed. Holy crap! Peaked my curiosity, so I'm gonna try one of these. I'm gonna bite one in half really quick. Yep, same situation. Good ratios of peanut to that. So yeah, obviously an occasional treat, but but I haven't had one of these in like. 10 years probably. Off the bat, our gears are turning and this would be the perfect like gift for somebody who's vegan curious and doesn't know how to shop for vegan snacks and stuff and just get this for them so that they can kind of launch into it. And my coupon code, Mike the Vegan, will get you $5 off your first box, so definitely use that. All right, moving on. Now for the issue of statistics quickly here, and there's a bit of a meme I see in the low carb community that is quite frustrating, and that is that anything, any study with a risk ratio of less than two actually should just be discarded. The other thing about this report is, if you're familiar with epidemiology, you'd know that a study with a relative risk under two is probably noise and should be thrown out. More than two thirds of the studies on colorectal cancer did not find a relative risk over two. This is a great way to ignore all of the epidemiological warnings about your diet, but let me explain why from a public health perspective, this is highly irresponsible. First and most laughable, as Dr. Avi mentions in his video here, a risk ratio of over two would actually be impossible if a population has a disease rate of 50% or higher, over 100%, it just doesn't work mathematically. And that is relevant because we're actually pretty close to 50% of adults having heart disease, according to the American Heart Association. But for things with disease rates under 50, percent it still matters because for example let's say you have a 20 percent increased risk of heart disease with some compound that we've been adding to the water nationally well if that's a 20 percent increased risk of heart disease death that would translate to about 120,000 more heart disease deaths nationally in the u.s so i think we kind of want to know <laughs> oh but if it didn't double the risk of death i think we should probably just ignore it and to connect to cigarettes again that 50 grams of processed meat actually is associated with yeah, around a 20% increase of colorectal cancer, which is about the same as your increased risk of lung cancer when you're exposed to secondhand smoke. 
So according to what I learned, parents should feel fine about their kids being around secondhand smoke. In fact, why don't we just start smoking in schools and hospitals again? And at one point he really tries to paint this increased colorectal cancer risk as, you know, hardly any increase, but the reality is from fightcolorectalcancer.org, and I did fact check this, colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death among men and women combined in the US, and one in 20 people will be diagnosed with colorectal cancer. So a risk ratio of under two can matter a lot. It's important and it's an agreed just disrespect of public health to say otherwise. <laughs> anyway, there are also other types of cancer that these nitrosamines might affect, and this is huge. We're talking about a 74% increased risk of leukemia, up to 2.1 times the risk of bladder cancer. Uh-oh, that's over two. An increased risk of infant brain cancer. A Couple more studies on colorectal cancer worth mentioning. Smoked or cured fish can have high nitrosamine content. From this study, we're looking at 2.6 times the risk of colorectal cancer. Cancer. Finally, 2.1 times colorectal cancer risk when tracking for nitrosamine specifically, and that was a higher risk than just looking at total processed meat risk, and that hints that these nitrosamines may have a massive role in the carcinogenic nature of processed meats, and that's over two, so he's gotta believe it. And he ends on a point that I find entertaining, that he really just cares that people are making valid claims about carcinogens in meat. I just wish points for or against certain foods were more realistic. Yeah, I don't buy it. Well, he softly paints bacon as not healthy. He just primarily defends bacon for 12 minutes. Now he insinuates based on no human data that the nitrates in processed meat could actually be healthy for your arteries. Now he uses some dude's LinkedIn page to pseudoscientifically deny that these nitrates and nitrates in meat are turned into nitrosamines in the gut and then goes on to make bogus calculations based on that. But again, with his own threshold, the amount of nitrosamines that might be made within your own system with a serving of meat can be up to 20 times the level that he was saying would be carcinogenic, would cause cancer. And while he does admit this at the end, he does not even cover on a ton of other reasons that processed meat can be carcinogenic or meat in general. We're talking about heme iron, advanced glycation end products, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, the oxidation of saturated fat, and so on. He says he's gonna talk about that in the next video. We will see. Anyway, I just wanna thank nutritionfacts.org, Dr. Greger, for throwing together a bunch of data, a bunch of science on nitrates in plants, especially. Finally, again, I have that coupon code for $5 off your first vegan cuts box. If you do it, let me know what you thought. And also let me know what you think about this video down below and all of what I learned health claims. I definitely don't buy it. If you buy it, tell me why you buy it. All right, as usual, feel free to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.